Chapter 1641. The plot begins, too. But one could only write one character on the jade token and the spirit power within the jade token would be depleted after one use, needing a whole day in between each use. Hence, Jun Wuxi would not use it under normal circumstances as this was a link among the companions while they were in the various palaces, allowing them a point of contact. Jun Wuxi stared at the jade token in her hand and she spread out a piece of paper upon the table. Upon it was clearly written, Flame Demon's Palace, Dragon Slayer's Palace, Soul Return Palace, Blood Fiend Palace, Zen Void Palace, Dark Heavens Palace, Purple Thunder Palace, Flamboyant Palace, All Life Palace, Shadow Moon Palace, Green Tide Palace and the Pure Grace Palace. All the names of the twelve palaces listed on the paper. Among them, Kiao Chu went to the Flame Demon's Palace, Fi Yan to the Dragon Slayer's Palace, Rong Yuo Soul Return Palace, Fan Zuo Dark Heavens Palace, and Hu Yao in the Purple Thunder Palace. Among the twelve palaces, the Flame Demon's Palace and the Blood Fiend Palace were in first grade, followed by the Dragon Slayer's Palace and the Dark Heavens Palace, and then came the Soul Return Palace, the Zen Void Palace and the Purple Thunder Palace. The other five palaces were also the weakest five palaces of all. The palaces who possessed a portion of the map to the Dark Emperor's tomb were all relatively at the forefront in position among the twelve palaces and among the seven palaces, Kiaochu and the other companions had infiltrated into five of them. It could be said that they had penetrated into the most critical few palaces but for the highly thorny Blood Fiend Palace, where Jun Wuxi and the companions did not join. Hence, when they had just been admitted into the Cloudy Brook Academy, Jun Wuxi had intentionally and unintentionally tried to make the people from the Blood Fiend Palace notice her. She had then lent the hand of the Blood Fiend Palace to stir up discontent from the other palaces onto them. Giao Chu and the other had then been tasked with heckling and instigating everyone, fanning the crowd to go against the Blood Fiend Palace. Now, it was no longer possible for the Blood Fiend Palace to remain aloof from the turmoil. Jun Wuxi's gaze then shifted over to the palaces that Giao Chu and the others were at. In order for her to be able to employ the powers she held within her grasp, by stirring up and muddying the waters among the twelve palaces would then allow all of them to achieve their aim. Once several of the important palaces were broken, the other palaces would just fall right with them. A glint came into Jun Wuxi's eyes and she grasped the brush in her hand to slowly draw a red circle around the pure grace palace. At the same time, upon the jade token, she wrote the character for pure. At that moment, Kiao Chu and the other companions had already gone down Mount Fu Yao to meet with the escort from their respective palaces. The companions had all climbed onto their own horse carriages that were driving to various locations when they faintly felt the jade token they carried everywhere with them reacting peculiarly. Discreetly, they took out their jade token and saw the character for pure and every one of their faces showed understanding. The plot begins. And the first target has been set. From here, it is time to see their capabilities at stirring up the waves and turning the tide. After having sent out the news, Jun Wuxi calmed her heart and took out the Lotus Basin. She would only need to wait quietly from now onwards for the show to begin. The sudden decision of the Cloudy Brook Academy had not only caused the disciples in the Cloudy Brook Academy to be thrown into a tizzy, it was the same for the Twelve Palaces as well. But it was different from the complicated feelings the disciples were feeling as the Twelve Palaces highly approved of ending the training prematurely. The situation in every palace among the twelve palaces now subtly peculiar. They were all trying very hard to gather strength. Every time the battle of deities ended, they were required to send the people they picked into the Cloudy Brook Academy. This was a rule of the battle of deities and although the twelve palaces followed the rules on the front, they were actually not pleased to have to do that. They had brought forward the battle of deities grand meet in an effort just to attract new talents. But before they could bring the new talents back to their own palaces, they were all sent to Cloudy Brook Academy and it was not known which month or day before they would be released. Chapter 1642, The Plot Begins, 3. Everyone knew that the Cloudy Brook Academy was easy to enter but hard to get out from. 
having a bunch of their newly acquired power being locked up within the Cloudy Brook Academy and wanting to have them come all out would be impossible without waiting several years time, which greatly ate at the patience of the twelve palaces. They were highly displeased that it had to be this way but the Battle of Deities Grand Meat was not a place that the twelve palaces had a say in and being able to bring the meat forward was a result that only came about after debating furiously with the nine temples. Wanting them to continue to violate the rules of the Battle of Deities any further would be a result that the nine temples would not be happy to see. But now, things had turned out well. The Cloudy Brook Academy had suddenly for some unknown reason released everyone which had absolutely delighted the twelve palaces. It must be known that besides the disciples who had just been admitted into the Cloudy Brook Academy, those seniors from earlier batches who had after such a long time still been unable to graduate had been similarly released as well. Although the powers of these seniors had not been really all that gifted, they were however still power that belonged to the twelve palaces. It could be said that the twelve palaces were filled with delight and they were all just short of raising drums and cymbals in welcome of the return of these youths. The palace lords of the various palaces were also highly satisfied with such a result. As they had managed to pull into their palaces, highly talented youths who were more gifted than any of the previous battle of deities from before. But the return of the youths did not bring delight to every single one of the palaces like that blood fiend palace at that moment. In the blood fiend palace, the palace lord of the blood fiend palace, Guyi was seated in the main hall. He was already highly advanced in age but judging based on just his looks, he looked merely like a middle-aged man around forty years of age, with only two slightly grey streaks at the temples revealing his well-concealed age. Guyi possessed handsome looks and the vestiges of time had not left its trace upon him but had instead enhanced a sense of steadfastness and the dominating air around him. Down on the floor of the great hall, the various elders of the Blood Fiend Palace were standing on both sides of the hall, the atmosphere within the Blood Fiend Palace feeling somewhat heavy. An elderly man could be seen with his face pale, his eyes filled with sorrow. He stood in the middle of the great hall as he said while looking at Guyi. It is not known what this decision by the Cloudy Brook Academy could mean but looking at the situation now, the Blood Fiend Palace seems to be getting the short end of the stick. Oh? How is that? Guyi asked as he looked at the elderly man who spoke. That elderly man was not anyone else but Lin Haoyu's grandfather, Elder Lin, an old man who had followed Guyi for a rather long time who was highly revered in the Blood Fiend Palace. In the last Battle of Deities Grand Meet. Quite a number of highly talented individuals appeared, but they had mostly been roped into other palaces. Although there was quite a good number of people who joined our Blood Fiend Palace as well, the number of gifted elites was rather few. My lord should know very clearly that in this last battle of deities Grand Meet, among the most outstanding six people, not one had chosen to join our Blood Fiend Palace. Although the Blood Fiend Palace did extend our invitations to all of them, they had all given a variety of reasons to reject us. If these had just been regular prodigies, it wouldn't have mattered that much. But those several people possessed powers that are rare to see even in a hundred years. Originally, these youths were set to spend quite a amount of time training their cultivation inside the Cloudy Brook Academy which would have been a good thing as that would allow the Blood Fiend Palace time to adjust things a little. But now that they have all been released early, the addition of these youths into the other palaces would definitely strengthen their might and this has caused a great loss to the Blood Fiend Palace. Elder Lin said with his brows knitted up tightly together. Those most outstanding youths from the last Battle of Deities Grand Meet, they had also fought to have them join the Blood Fiend Palace. But what made them want to vomit out blood the most was that not a single one among them had agreed to join. When all the palaces among the twelve were competing to acquire new strength at the same time, such big disparity in results became every more obvious to see. Chapter 1643, The Secret Worry of the Blood Fiend Palace, 1. And the actions of the Cloudy Brook Academy had just sped up the time that great disparity took to appear. The Blood Fiend Palace's might and that of the Palace of Flame Demons were neck to neck and after the Palace of Flame Demons lost two of their elders, 
It gave the Blood Fiend Palace its best opportunity to oppress the Flame Demon Palace but right at that moment, the Flame Demon's Palace just had to gain themselves a youth who possessed highly rare gift and at a such a young age, he already possessed powers of the Purple Spirit at the third level, a level of power not any different from those of the Elders. A youth who was able to hold power like that being just in his teens had no one capable of guessing how fast his powers would rise in the future but to the Blood Fiend Palace, it posed as a grave and serious threat. Elder Lin's words made Gu Yi fall deep in thought, thinking that those words were not spoken without reason. The situation between the Blood Fiend Palace and the Flame Demons was on razor edge and both palaces were putting in every effort they could to outdo the other. The Flame Demon's Palace got Giaochu and our Blood Fiend Palace had instead lost two of our highly talented disciples. In comparison, the Blood Fiend Palace's strength is being constantly depleted. Elder Lin continued to say. Among the new and young talents, the powers of Xumu and Lin Haoyu were most highly regarded. Although Xumu was of humble birth, he was highly gifted. The Blood Fiend Palace had intended to let him continue to train his cultivation in the Cloudy Brook Academy for a while more and that was why they had not been in a hurry to summon him back. In fact, with Xumu's power, it wasn't all that difficult for him to pass the Cloudy Brook Academy's test but due to the Blood Fiend Palace's decision, Xumu had now been reduced to become a person close to being a total vegetable. Having all his meridians severed by Suya, even if the most precious and priceless herbs were used to save him, it would be impossible for him to recover to the state he was in before. And Lin Haoyu's circumstances was even worse. Although he had not suffered that kind of severe injuries to his body, his mental mind had completely collapsed. For Xumu, he could still be nursed to some extent and even if he was unable to make a full recovery to his former level of aptitude, he would be able to regain his powers somewhat. But as in how you had lost his mind, even if he possessed peerless power, a lunatic would still be as good as having lost all his fighting prowess. The loss of two of their most prominent young talents had caused the Blood Fiend Palace endless frustration. And these two incidents, one was done by the Cloudy Brook Academy and the other was committed by a member of the Flame Demon's Palace. With the kind of position the Cloudy Brook Academy held in the Middle Realm, even if the Blood Fiend Palace wanted to seek an explanation from them, it wouldn't yield them much of a result. But in Lin Haoyu's case, how is Lin Haoyu's condition now? Gu Yi asked. Elder Lin sighed slightly and shook his head. After Lin Haoyu was brought back from the Blood Fiend Palace, Elder Lin had found found quite a number of physicians to come provide treatment and had even invited many powerful medical practitioners, thinking to heal Lin Haoyu completely but the result had just made Elder Lin despair further. No matter how many people came to check on Lin Haoyu's condition, the conclusion they gave was all the same. There was nothing they could do. Lin Haoyu was frightened into his lunacy, it was not something that could be nursed or treated with medicines as it was a mental illness. Elder Lin had practiced hard on his cultivation all his life and he had only gotten himself a son in his old age. But his son had been frail and sickly from a young age and even though Elder Lin had spent a fortune on countless priceless herbs to prolong his life, he still finally succumbed to illness in the end. Elder Lin's son till death had only left a single offspring behind, the lone Lin Haoyu. Elder Lin had brought him up and groomed him with utmost care deeply worried that his grandson would have a life as short as his son. Fortunately Lin Haoyu had still been able to live up to expectations and had a rather healthy body constitution from young and his talents and spirit powers were rather high which made Elder Lin want to expend all resources at his disposal upon that lone grandson of his. Chapter 1644, The Secret Worry of the Blood Fiend Palace, 2 seeing with his own eyes his own grandson's talents showing more and more, Elder Lin's heart filled with pride and glee. But who would have thought that he would suddenly go mad not long after just having been accepted into the Cloudy Brook Academy? And what made it even more unacceptable to Elder Lin was the fact that his grandson was beaten into lunacy by people. Although they were unable to enter into the Cloudy Brook Academy, that did not mean that they knew nothing of the going-ons inside. 
disciples of the twelve palaces who were practicing cultivation within the Cloudy Brook Academy would leave Mount Fuyao on those days the academy opened their doors and bring news of the place to the respective points of contact to let those people bring it back to the palaces. And it was in that manner that El Dillon came to know that his grandson had suffered such harsh treatment within the Cloudy Brook Academy. Flame Demon's Palace, Kiao Chu. Those five words had been branded right into Elder Lin's heart. The Blood Fiend Palace and the Flame Demon's Palace were already at loggerheads before this and coupled with the fact that Giao Chu was one of the most illustrious contestants in the last Battle of Spirits Grand Meet, Elder Lin had to pin the blame of this matter onto the Flame Demon's Palace. Otherwise with Giao Chu not holding any grudges towards Lin Haoyu, why would he set out to oppress Lin Haoyu so much? Although Elderlin was trying his hardest to suppress the anger raging within, his hatred towards the flame demon's palace and Giao Chu was growing by the day. Especially when he looked at the state of lunacy that Lin Haoyu had fallen into, it just made his heart fill with pain and the grudge stronger. Guiyi looked at elders gathered within the hall in silence. The fact that Elderlin had brought up the disadvantage the Blood Fiend Palace had suffered in the last Battle of Deities Grand Meet was more or less influenced by self-serving interests but he had very cleverly not stated it too clearly but had put it across based on the interests of the Blood Fiend Palace which made it impossible for anyone to refute. Moreover, what Elderlin was saying was not false and the Blood Fiend Palace's current situation was indeed a little awkward. Throughout such a good and proper battle of deities grand meet and they had not been able to attract any of the several people they had set their sights on but had instead lost two of their highly talented disciples which made it rather perplexing indeed. When Xin Yan comes back, I will definitely ask her about what actually happened and if this matter had truly been an intentional act by the flame demon's palace, we, the blood fiend palace will surely not let the matter pass so easily. Elder Lin you can rest assured that I will definitely make the flame demon's palace and that Giao Chu give you and Lin Hao you an answer to it. Gu Yi said. Elder Lin nodded vehemently, an expression of gratitude on his face. No matter how much the twelve palaces schemed against each other behind the scenes, when one seek to openly go against another palace, they would still require the palace lord to decide. Regardless of how much hatred he harbored, he would still be unable to go against the Blood Fiend Palace's rules and seek to deal with the matter privately. Your subordinate thanks my lord on Haoyu's behalf. Elder Lin fell to his knees to offer his gratitude. Gu Yi waved his hand indicating for him to stand up and spoke a little bit more with the other elders before dismissing everyone. Walking out from the hall, Gu Yi's gaze turned to look at the handsome looking youth standing outside the doors. You heard everything clearly? Gu Yi's eyes turned slightly chilly. Gu Ying who stood outside the doors shrugged his shoulders, his arms crossed over his chest as he leaned lazily against the door and said with a smile, if you mean all that grumbling from Elder Lin then I had naturally heard it. Gu Yi then said sneeringly, I made you go to the Cloudy Brook Academy to partly deliver medicine to Lin Hao Yu and also to look into what the situation is like inside the Cloudy Brook Academy. What kind of answer did you give me? All was peaceful and well? This is what you call peaceful and well? Lin Hao Yu went mad the day right after you left. Gu Ying, is this what you mean as peaceful and well? Gu Yi's gaze was turning chillier and chillier and at the moment his voice fell he actually sent a slap right across Gu Ying's face. That slap had been extremely loud which immediately left a glaringly red five-fingered palm print upon the clear face of Gu Ying's. Chapter 1645, The Secret Worry of the Blood Fiend Palace, 3. Gu Ying's face was slapped hard and blood spilled out from the corner of his mouth. But there wasn't even the slightest bit of anguish in Gu Yi's eyes, his gaze remaining just as cold, not in the least bit like the eyes of a father looking at his child. Do you even realize your mistake in this at all? Gu Yi asked in a frosty tone. Gu Ying calmly tilted his head back to look straight into Gu Yi's eyes with his face still showing a brilliant smile. But the trickle of blood spilling over the corner of his mouth looked highly horrifying. However, his eyes still filled with mirth like the person who had been struck was not him at all. I know my mistake now. Gu Ying replied obediently. Useless piece of trash. Since you know you've done wrong, 
Why haven't you gone to receive your punishment? There was the slightest tinge of sympathy in Gu Yi's tone. The way he treated Gu Ying was vicious like the way he treated an enemy. I will obey. Gu Ying nodded slightly, turning his back to silently walk away. Gu Yi stared at Gu Ying's back. His eyes filled with disdain. Who would have thought that the palace lord of the blood fiend palace would be on such bad terms with his own son? Gu Ying slowly walked out from Gu Yi's line of sight, the smile on his face not reducing in the slightest as he walked past disciples of the blood fiend palace. When the disciples saw Gu Ying, they all subconsciously lowered their heads, not staring to stare at the wretched state Gu Ying's face was in. This was not the first time that such a situation had occurred and it was not known why the usually amiable palace lord was so hard-hearted towards the young lord. It had been like this since Gu Ying was very young. Gu Yi had been extremely harsh and strict towards him, so much so that others who saw it felt their hearts wince. Initially, people had thought that the palace lord had seeked to mold his son to be a dragon among men and that was the reason he was being so strict. But Gu Yi wasn't so harsh with his daughter Gu Xinyan but acted like what a real father would. Although there were times he was strict as well. Most of time he displayed great care and doting indulgence towards Gu Xinyan. Gu Ying walked through the blood fiend palace like there was no one around, the glaringly red five-fingered palm print and the streak of blood at the corner of his mouth causing others to not dare to look at him. He walked alone towards the blood fiend palace's dungeon, the place where disciples of the blood fiend palace received their punishment. Inside the dim and dank dungeon, were various chilling tools of torture. When the disciples within the dungeon saw Gu Ying appear, they immediately went forward to bow in deference. Gu Ying ignored them completely and instead walked on his own towards the torture rack. I came to receive punishment. Gu Ying said highly and nonchalantly. The men on duty at the dungeon looked at each other and then stepped forward without a word to help Gu Ying remove his outer robe, leaving him only with his thin underrobe before strapping him onto the torture rack. The crackling sounds of the whip reverberated within the dim dungeon, sounding unusually prickly to the ear under the silence of the place. The sounds went on for half a day, and it only stopped when it was deep into the night. The disciple meeting out the punishment had already retreated out from the dungeon and in that dim dungeon, only Gu Ying who was covered all over in blood was the all alone strapped upon the torture rack, his head drooping down. The thin inner robe torn to shreds by the countless lashes of the whip, the crisscrossing wounds with his flesh torn and turned outwards. Blood congealed upon the gaping wounds. Only on that handsome face was there no trace of a wound, but was extremely pale and drained of all color. Gu Ying's eyes were both closed and his hair slightly messed up. He looked like he had fainted but was still tied to the torture rack with the rope around his hands. Suddenly, a black shadow walked out from under the dim flickering light, to look at Gu Ying tied up upon the torture rack and his brows creased together slightly. Young Lord. Gu Ying's eyes opened slowly as he raised his head, revealing a long lash mark around his neck running down all the way from his ear to his collarbone. Chapter 1646, The Secret Worry of the Blood Fiend Palace, 4. Suddenly, a black shadow walked out from under the dim flickering light, to look at Gu Ying tied up upon the torture rack and his brows creased together slightly. Young Lord. Gu Ying's eyes opened slowly as he raised his head, revealing a long lash mark around his neck running down all the way from his ear to his collarbone. Under that dim darkness, Gu Ying's eyes glinted with a terrifying chill. The corners of his mouth curled up and the red blood-streaked lips looked highly devilish. Why would the young lord need to suffer such agony? Would the young lord need your subordinate too? Gu Ying shook his head, and laughter escaped from his mouth. Agony? This little bit of injury is just barely scratching the surface. If I am unable to even withstand this little bit, then I would have died thousands of times over so many years. The huge number of torture apparatuses the blood fiend palace would have people drawing a deep breath of astoundment. Even throughout all the twelve palaces, it would be difficult to find any one of them who would be able to match up to. Almost no one would be able to endure through all the tools of torture here but to Gu Ying, he had had a taste of every single one of them, 
all those tools having left a deep mark upon his body, where it could be said that he knew everything in that place more intimately than the guards and executors of torture. Gu Ying was the only one who had undergone all the forms of punishment, and had not died from it. The man's brows creased up even tighter together. Instead of talking about this, shouldn't you be sending people to watch the Cloudy Brook Academy? With them having released all their disciples suddenly, they could only be up to no good. The group of people I sent to the Cloudy Brook Academy before had not a single one come back alive, and I fear that the Cloudy Brook Academy might have discovered something. There must be a reason for their unnatural decision. If you do not wish to have that thing slip out from right beneath your eyes, you'd better send people to watch them closely. Gu Ying seemed to not be feeling the pain upon his body and was telling all this to the black-robed man with a cheerful voice. Your subordinate has already sent people to watch them. But the Cloudy Brook Academy has quite a number of powerful experts within and the people we sent over have either met with an untimely end or lost their lives within Mount Fuyao. It would not be easy for us to watch them closely at all. The black-robed man responded, his voice tinged with helplessness. Gu Ying stiffened the corners of his lips. It's just that all of you have been too gentle with them. If only you had struck earlier. Based on the style of the Cloudy Brook Academy, you will only have to gain control over their disciples in training within the Academy and those guys at the Cloudy Brook Academy would have to be highly careful with you. From Gu Ying's perspective, in order to achieve his objective, it had to be done through any means possible, unscrupulous and without mercy. Yes, young lord. The man accepted Gu Ying's admonishment, chastened. Forget it. The monk can run away but the monastery will remain. Since you're unable to go into the Cloudy Brook Academy, just station people at the foot of the mountain and pay close attention. There's no need to get too close as we will only need to know where they are going. Gu Ying said. I understand my orders. All right, you can be dismissed. I want to rest. Upon saying that, Gu Ying shut his eyes, like he wasn't inside the dungeon at that moment, and there weren't any of those terrifying and garish wounds on his body. The man disappeared into the shadows and in mere moments, there wasn't a single trace of his presence anymore the vastly empty dungeon having only Gu Ying as its lone occupant. Ten days later, the disciples who had been released from the Cloudy Brook Academy returned back to the Blood Fiend Palace. Gu Yi had even personally gone out to receive them outside the gates, welcoming Gu Xin Yan back to the Blood Fiend Palace. Along the way, the father and daughter pair were highly jovial as they chatted with each other, Gu Yi's eyes filled with their concern and indulgent adoration towards Gu Xin Yan. From the beginning to the end, Gu Ying just followed silently at the side, quietly looking at Gu Xin Yan who was showered with Gu Yi's doting love, the smile never once fading from his face. Chapter 1647, The Secret Worry of the Blood Fiend Palace, 5 from the beginning to the end, Gu Ying just followed silently at the side, quietly looking at Gu Xin Yan who was showered with Gu Yi's doting love, the smile never once fading from his face. Gu Xin Yan's return put Gu Yi in an extremely good mood and he held a great welcoming feast on that very same day, inviting all the disciples that came back to gather together, celebrating the fact that Gu Xin Yan had come back. Gu Xin Yan sat right beside Gu Yi, a faint smile on her face but just looking at that smile and one could see that it was a little forced, a little stiff. Little Yan, is there anything on your mind? After you came back this time, why do I feel that you are rather gloomy? Gu Yi asked as he looked at Gu Xin Yan, his eyes full of worry. This daughter of his, had been cradled within his hands from young, never letting her suffer any anguish. Now that he saw that Gu Xin Yan was looking so distracted, he could not help but feel a little worried. Gu Xin Yan jumped slightly and immediately shook her head. No, I'm just a little tired that's all. Gu Xin Yan said with a slight smile to brush the matter off, not revealing how much of a struggle and conflicted she had been feeling this entire time. Every night in her dreams, the same figure would always appear, seemingly neither close nor far away. It seemed as if she could reach out and touch it but every time she stretched her hand out, that person became further and further from her, no matter how she tried she was unable to reach it. It has been hard on you. 
It's good that you've come back. Gu Yi said benignly. Gu Xinyan smiled and did not say anything. When Gu Xinyan turned her eyes back, her gaze suddenly spotted Gu Ying who was seated in a corner and staring at her with smile on his face. That smile just sent chills running through Gu Xinyan. She and Gu Ying were step-siblings from the same father. Gu Ying's mother was married to Gu Yi before Gu Xinyan's mother and when Gu Xinyan was still a very young child, she had seen Gu Ying's mother. She was an extremely beautiful woman and Gu Xinyan still remembered now the day when she had stumbled into that little courtyard and saw that lady playing the zither under the peach blossom tree. That was the most beautiful woman Gu Xinyan had ever seen in her life. Gu Ying's mother. Of the nine temples, the young lady lord of the spirit void temple. And the most beautiful person throughout the entire nine temples and twelve palaces. It was once rumored that the young lady lord of the spirit void temple was the most beautiful person throughout the entire middle realm and countless highly talented and good looking men had tried all ways and means seeking to merely win a smile from her. Gu Yi had been one of those pursuers at that time and it was not known why the young lady lord of the spirit void temple had chosen to marry Gu Yi but what was once seen to be a match made in heaven receiving the blessings of many just changed entirely in the end. Within the blood fiend palace, no one dared to mention that person. The very young Xin Yan had only seen that person once when she unconsciously stumbled upon her and saw that she was truly indeed very beautiful. But for some reason unknown to everyone, Gu Yi changed entirely as a person after he married the young lady lord of the spirit Voy temple, no longer so loving and indulgent when he had pursued for the fair lady's hand, to have turned to become cold and distant. Even the birth of Gu Ying had not been able to salvage all of that. On the day that Gu Ying was born, Gu Yi was receiving Gu Xinyan's mother into the Blood Fiend Palace as his bride, the entire Blood Fiend Palace filled with endless celebratory festivities, but not a single person remembered about the young lady lord who was laboring in childbirth. Gu Xinyan could no longer remember when the young lady lord passed away but only remembered that her death had come and passed without a whisper. It was only after several years had passed that Gu Xinyan came to know about the news. It wasn't that Gu Xinyan was unaware of the great disparity in the way Gu Yi treated her and Gu Ying. They were both children of his, but the harsh manner that Gu Yi treated Gu Ying sometimes highly flustered Gu Xinyan. Chapter 1648, The Secret Worry of the Blood Fiend Palace, 6. Towards the favor her father showed to her. It wasn't that Gu Xinyan was oblivious to it. She had brought it up before but Gu Yi had changed the subject to divert her attention away from it. It wasn't that the very young Gu Xinyan had not wanted to be on close terms with Gu Ying. Gu Yi only had that one pair of children and Gu Ying had been blessed with extremely good looks which just made the very young Gu Xinyan yearn to get close to him. Initially, the relationship between the two was not so distant. At that time, Gu Xinyan had always tottered along on her two short legs behind, calling out to her big brother Gu Ying incessantly. But it was not known from when it started that Gu Ying began to distance himself away from her, even employing highly bloody and gory methods to drive fear into her, not wanting her to take a single step closer. Gradually, the two of them grew more and more distant. Gu Ying's brutality terrified Gu Xinyan terribly. The melodious sounds of string instruments played and the dancers twirled within the Blood Fiend Palace while the youths who had just come back watched on enraptured. No one even noticed that the one who should have been placed right at Gu Yi's side, but had been stopped and instead seated right in a corner, the young lord, Gu Ying. He sat in a place where the bright lantern's light did not reach, in dim darkness, like he did not fit in with everything happening there. He sipped quietly at the wine. The corners of his mouth lifted in wild and uninhibited smile as he watched the celebratory festivities of music and dance. I heard that when all of you were on your way back, there was an incident that occurred. Gu Yi turned to Gu Xinyan and asked, a smile on his face. Gu Xinyan was slightly taken aback and she asked, is father talking about the incident between the Pure Grace Palace and the Dragon Slayer's Palace? Gu Yi nodded. The position of the Dragon Slayer's Palace among the Twelve Palaces was just beneath that of the Blood Fiend Palace and the Flame Demon's Palace, 
and it could be said that they were highly powerful while the pure grace palace was a little weaker than them. Originally, there was no conflict between these two palaces but after they all came down from Mount Fuyao, there had been an unexpected accident. Just coming out from Mount Fuyao, the routes the various palaces took were largely similar where they would take a short break after having traveled for a day and the palaces were not all that far away from each other. But just as the respective palaces were at rest, an incident that was not neither all that big nor completely too small a deal occurred. A disciple from the Pure Grace Palace, whom it was not known whether it was from lust-driven courage or something else, actually dared to attempt to attempt to take advantage of the Dragon Slayer's palace's Fi Yan, which stirred up quite a big ruckus then. Fi Yan had been one of the top names in the last battle of Deity's Grand Meet and had gained the attention of quite a number of people. Although a girl, she possessed power in no way inferior to any of the other male youths and she was newfound strength that the Dragon Slayer's palace wanted to groom and grow, a person greatly valued. But besides possessing a highly powerful ring spirit and exemplary powers, Fi Yan was also blessed with highly eye-catching looks. Her beauty had also attracted quite a bit of attention from the exuberant youths. But most of them were sensible enough to not dare go provoke the Dragon Slayer's palace and could only hide their thoughts, keeping them to themselves. However, a disciple from the Pure Grace Palace had been daringly audacious who had waited till the night fell silent and quiet when he coaxed Fi Yan to go into the dense forest, seeking to commit atrocities against her. In the end, the disciple had been wounded by Fi Yan's ring spirit where the clamor had then startled people from the various palaces awake. That incident had immediately caused people from the Dragon Slayer's Palace and the Pure Grace Palace to immediately get into an argument. If not for the fact that there were people from other palaces there, the people from those two palaces might have just slugged it out there and then. Gu Yi listened till Gu Xin Yan finished her words and his mouth then revealed a sneer. I am thinking that the matter is not that simple right? That Fi Yan possesses significant power and the bunch of youths from the Pure Grace Palace would hardly be her match, so how could they possibly go provoke her so ignorantly? I am of the mind that this matter has been the intentional work of the Dragon Slayer's Palace, Chapter 1649, all done with great tacting. 1. With the level of might the Pure Grace Palace possessed, even if the young subordinate youths were not sensible enough at times, their adult escorts would still not possibly have permitted them to go do such a thing. Moreover, to these youths who have yet to be officially accepted into the various palaces, they would be highly fearful of giving a bad impression to their escorts even before they had set foot into the palace. If it was said that they would have the courage to commit such a deed, it would be hard to make it convincing. Additionally, what kind of a place was the Dragon Slayer's palace? Fi Yan's power had already attracted such a great amount of attention during the Battle of Deity's Grand Meet so how many people could possibly not know of her strength? Unless that kid from the Pure Grace Palace was an idiot. Otherwise, even with all the guts in the world, he wouldn't dare to even think of taking advantage of the Dragon Slayer's Palace's Fi Yan as regardless whether it was the Dragon Slayer's Palace behind Fi Yan or Fi Yan's own powers, they were both not things that the kid would be able to take on at all. Hence, there was no way that Gu Yi would believe that it had all been an accident. The incident had not been that carefully calculated and anyone with a brain who thought a little more about it would be able to detect something strange about the whole thing. Regarding this point, not only Gu Yi had thought of it, even the people from the Pure Grace Palace knew that this incident could not possibly be as simple as it looks. Even if one of their people had been beaten up, the Pure Grace Palace did not dare to make an issue out of it, nor would they dare to go up to the Dragon Slayer's Palace to seek an explanation. But as the person from the Pure Grace Palace that Fi Yan had thrashed up had been one of the more talented candidates among this batch of disciples, it had caused the Pure Grace Palace quite a bit of anguish. And at the same time that Gu Yi had his suspicions about the whole incident, over on the Dragon Slayer's Palace side, they had also just welcomed their disciples back and right after that, Fi Yan was made to remain behind by an elder of the Dragon Slayer's Palace who wanted to ask about the whole story in detail. Although the Dragon Slayer's Palace was stronger than the Pure Grace Palace, but unless there was an absolute need, the Dragon Slayer's Palace did not want to have a falling out with any one palace. 
but Fi Yan had bashed up a disciple of the Pure Grace Palace on their way back, which had caused quite a bit of suspicions among people. People were guessing that this had been the Dragon Slayer's Palace's intention but only people from the Dragon Slayer's Palace itself would know that they had not known anything about it before it happened. They had been just like the disciples from the other palaces, only knowing about the news after the new disciples had returned. The Dragon Slayer's Palace's elder looked at the pretty young girl standing before his eyes and could not help but feel his head start to ache. Speaking purely only in terms of power, Fi Yan was extremely strong. It was highly fortunate that the Dragon Slayer's Palace had been able to win themselves this disciple. But having stirred up so much trouble even before she had set foot into the Dragon Slayer's Palace, they could not help but feel suspicious about it. Under the current circumstances, no one could guarantee that among the disciples they had recruited, there wouldn't be any spies planted by other palaces. However, before the Dragon Slayer's Palace's elder could even ask two questions into the matter, he saw great big teardrops sliding down that pretty little face from the corners of Fi Yan's eyes. A delicate beauty like that breaking down into a shower of tears in an instant, it immediately threw the elderly elder into a helpless fluster. Why why are you crying for? I am just asking about what happened then. Don't cry already the elder was at a loss. He was not accustomed to comforting a young little girl. If it had been any other regular disciple, he wouldn't need to mind it so much. But Fi Yan's ring spirit was very powerful and if she was a spy, she could be eradicated. But if she wasn't losing one of their most valuable disciples would really hurt the Dragon Slayer's palace. Hence, before they were able to ascertain Fi Yan's identity, the Dragon Slayer's palace would not dare to sour their relationship with Fi Yan. How could I possibly even make myself say it? Fi Yan choked pitifully as he wiped his tears, looking so intolerably wronged and aggrieved. Chapter 1650, all done with great tacting, too. The Dragon Slayer's palace's elder was a little stunned as he stared at the weeping and sobbing Fi Yan and all the incisive and probing questions he had all prepared quickly fell in crumbles onto the floor. Isn't the last emotional plunge a little too drastic? Just looking at Fi Yan who was sobbing so hard to be unable to even breathe properly made him look like he had suffered some big grievance. That would immediately cause anyone to pity and sympathize with him, and be unable to use even a single harsh word on him. Oh, don't just cry like that. If you have suffered any grievance, you can just tell me all about it. You are already a member of the Dragon Slayer's Palace and the Dragon Slayer's Palace will not allow their disciples to be bullied in any way out there. The Elder had no choice but to soften his tone a little. Fi Yan blinked his big tear filled eyes and sniffled pitifully as he looked at the Elder. Real really? The Palace wouldn't despise me because I got into such trouble? Boo hoo I really did not mean it that person was really very bad and, and I wanted to run away but he pulled hard at my clothes, not letting me move at all with no other choice left. I summoned my ring spirit. I really did not mean to hurt him at all. I only only after barely saying those few sentences, Fi Yan broke into tears again, the bean-sized teardrops falling from the corners of his eyes continuously. His little face red from crying. Fi Yan had already possessed extremely good looks and now that he was sobbing so hard, he just looked so endearingly pitiful. To the extent that when several of the other Dragon Slayer's Palace's disciples who were standing at the side saw such a beauty looking so aggrieved, they found it absolutely heartbreaking to watch, immediately thinking in their minds just how maniacally cruel and heartless that scoundrel from the Pure Grace Palace was, and they wished they could immediately drag that deplorable beast to give him another good thrashing. We wouldn't, we wouldn't do that. You are a member of our Dragon Slayer's Palace and it is only natural that we will protect you. The Elder hurried to say quickly. He hadn't been mesmerized by Fi Yan's beauty, but had instead noticed one point that Fi Yan had mentioned through her words interjected with sobs. And that was her ring spirit. Fi Yan had taken part in the ring spirit segment during the last battle of deities grand meet and the meet's ring spirit venue placed great importance on the might of one's ring spirit and did not place much emphasis on one's personal spirit powers. Fi Yan was from the Great Ape tribe and although people from the Great Ape tribe were born with unparalleled strength, there were limitations to that. 
and that was the men of the great ape tribe were always blessed with great strength, but their women were however slightly weaker than the average female. Remembering that point, the fact that Fi Yan was unable to resist against that person from the Pure Grace Palace now seemed rather plausible. Moreover, Fi Yan's might came mainly from her own spirit and not from her own spirit powers. Although she might possess a significant amount of power herself, but that person from the Pure Grace Palace had been one of their top three recruits with the strongest spirit powers. Reassessing the facts now, it seemed that it was not entirely impossible that Fi Yan could be restrained by that person. Especially when it was, the elder looked at the still weeping Fi Yan who was pitifully raining down tears. It had to be said that with Fi Yan's outstanding looks and that soft and weak personality of hers, it would be really hard for those youthful and highly exuberant youths to be able to control their impulses against Fi Yan. The elder had somewhat already believed it. Before he had gotten Fi Yan to come forward, he had seeked out the youths who had been admitted into the Cloudy Brook Academy together with Fi Yan and asked them things about Fi Yan, like what her personality and temperament was like in the academy and so forth. And the content of what those youths had told him, was right about the same as what the elder was seeing now. It was said that when Fi Yan was in the academy, she was already so demure and weak, never ever getting herself involved in any of the conflicts between the other youths, a highly sensible and obedient young lady, 